I am hard at work on the Gunforged demo and it is on the horizon. There have been some major updates in preparation for the demo, including a complete UI overhaul, a new enemy type, and the implementation of sound effects. But that's not all. Stick around till the end of the video to see the rework of the Rat King boss. I'm very eager to get the Gunforged demo into your hands. In the meantime, while you're waiting for that, you can wishlist Gunforged on on Steam. Wishlisting is a great way to support the game and a great way to be notified when it becomes available. The link to wishlist the game is in the description. If you're new to this devlog series, let me introduce you to Gunforged, a 2D roguelite shooter where you craft the ultimate monster slaying build. You combine unique, powerful gun parts with potent affixes to customize your gun's behavior and you gain permanent passive abilities during runs to boost your powers. Since the last devlog, I've been working hard to create a vertical slice of the game. A vertical slice is essentially a demo that represents the final vision of the product, but without all of the content. The goal of the Gunforged vertical slice is to give you a taste of what the final game will look and feel like. Once you've played the demo, I'll make any necessary tweaks and then focus on creating more content for the final release, such as new enemies, arenas, bosses, guns, passive abilities, and encounters. Now, let's dive into the new updates. In the previous devlog, the passive and gun upgrade UI was incredibly bland and lifeless. This game is called Gunforged after all, so where's the gun forging? This was a major problem with my presentation. Despite the fact that this bland UI took a lot of time to make, I decided to remake it and embrace the themes of metal and forging. The new passive upgrade UI features metal ingots slamming onto the screen with a weighty feeling. This weight is reinforced with a forging sound effect. I also added an orange wavy banner to give them some color and more life, as well as to display the name of the passive. When the player selects a passive, it triggers a satisfying impact animation and adds it to the player. After selecting a passive, the player is taken to the overhauled weapon upgrade screen. Here, everything is an ingot, including the reforge and gold buttons on the right hand side. Weapons are now displayed as ingots in a similar fashion to the passive passive ingots. Clicking the reforge button plays a sliding animation that indicates the weapon parts are being swapped out and reforged. And clicking an upgrade also plays a hefty animation similar to the passive screen. There's still some tweaking I want to do to these screens, but overall I'm much happier with how they look and feel. They definitely contribute a forging and metallurgy feeling to the game, which I like. Before I continue, did you know that I have a Udemy course? If you're interested in learning how to make a game in Godot 4, check out my course, Create a Complete 2D Survivor Style Game in Godot 4. In the course, I teach you everything you need to know about how to make a complete 2D game in Godot. The link to that course is in the description. The final aspect of the UI that needed a major overhaul was the shop screen. In Gunforged, there is a chance for a shopkeeper to spawn in between waves. <laughs> Talking to the shopkeeper allows you to purchase his wares, which include health refills and weapon parts. I won't go too deep into this UI overhaul now because it's very similar to the other screens, but of all the screens that I overhauled, this one was the hardest to update. There's a lot of unique UI elements to this screen, and it was hard getting everything working in an acceptable way from a user experience standpoint. Aside from those UI elements, I did a ton of playtesting over these past few weeks. The game is generally fun, but there are gaps in the smoothness or reliability of the gameplay. For example, I found that in this dungeon arena, I am able to pretty easily dodge all attacks by simply running around in a circle. This is a problem. One way to fix this problem is to introduce terrain elements so that the walkable area is no longer a square. However, the arena after the dungeon is the graveyard, which has a cross-shaped walkable area that solves this problem. For the dungeon, I decided to introduce a new enemy type specifically designed for area denial. Behold, the gargoyle. I'm not entirely satisfied with the gargoyle art yet, so I will probably revisit it shortly in the 
future. The gargoyle hovers around the map in the later waves of the dungeon arena, hurling blobs of poison goo at the player. Upon landing, these blobs become pustules that rapidly expand and explode, dealing damage in an area. The blobs also predict the future player location, which forces the player to change direction in order to avoid taking damage. This is highly effective in breaking up the player's movement patterns and creates a far more engaging gameplay experience. In addition to the movement issue, I also found the game increased in pace far too quickly. After even just a few waves, the player used to be able to fill the screen with bullets. I took the time to tweak the pacing of the game to make it slightly slower and more deliberate. I've lowered the fire rate and magazine capacity of all the weapons in the game so that the player has to fight monsters slightly longer and alternate guns more frequently. I also increased the number of monsters that spawn each wave. I may have overtuned this number of monsters because I have difficulty beating the first arena now, but generally speaking, this is a pace that I am much happier with. I feel like I actually need to put effort into dodging and using my dashes carefully because I can no longer instantly kill enemies the moment they appear on screen. Previously, after a wave was completed, the player would teleport to a hub room where they would upgrade their weapons and interact with any random encounters that were generated. Once the player was done in this area, the player would step on a teleporter to be sent back to the main room. This broke up the pacing of the game in an awkward way. I also didn't like the technical complexity that was introduced with this system. To fix this problem, I created these teleporter beams that send down the required elements to the player in between waves. An upgrade table and a lever are beamed into the arena, as well as any random encounter that may have been generated. The player must now interact with this upgrade table, which is like a mini forge, to start the upgrade process. Then, after passive and weapon upgrades have been chosen, the player pulls the lever and these elements are beamed back out. Then the next wave starts. I still need to think of a way of explaining this in the game's universe, but nonetheless, I think this is much more streamlined and doesn't take away from the player experience. In the previous devlog, I introduced the Gun Scrambler, which is a random encounter that completely randomizes one of the player's guns. The art for the Scrambler was pretty ugly, and I grew to dislike it over time. I updated this art so that it's now a floating die over a pedestal. When the player interacts with it, it plays a dice rolling sound effect and an animation. This generally looks much nicer and also has a more clear identity. One major issue with the game was that there was no player death animation. Previously, the player would die and just disappear, and the game would automatically restart. To address this, I created this death animation. When the player takes lethal damage, the game is paused, a black box slides behind the player, the camera zooms in, and the player explodes in a rain of blood. I'm really happy with how this turned out. The new death animation adds a moment for the player to understand what happened, and it also presents the player with the opportunity to restart the game. In the future, there will be more content on this screen such as kill count, number of survived waves, and other information like that. There's so much more I could mention in this devlog, so I will rapidly cover some of the other notable changes. I upgraded the art of the health pickup so that it's now a health vial. I added indicators that indicate to the player when there are important elements to interact with, both on on screen and off screen. Gold and health pickups now have a lifetime, which incentivizes the player to go after them and even risk taking damage to do so. The phantom gun is now more phantom-esque. The dash effect has been slightly improved. The player health and dash icons now have better animations. And I did a ton of sound effects work. Take a listen to what I have so far. And of course, as promised, I also completely overhauled the Rat King boss. This is the old Rat King boss. Notice how he lacks a distinct identity and flashiness. And here is the brand new Rat King, complete with a boss introduction animation. The boss intro zooms in the camera and shows the boss's art and name with a background effect, and then returns to the standard camera zoom and position before starting the fight. The Rat King now has better art as well, making his crown and robes more prominent. He currently has two unique attack states, 
one attack where he shoots rat bullets haphazardly around him, and his other attack sends rat traps in all directions. And finally, he also continuously spawns the basic rat enemies during the fight. During the design of this boss, I concluded that I probably need most, if not all of the boss fights in Gunforged to spawn additional monsters, because some player passives and weapon affixes are only useful when used against multiple enemies. And that's basically everything new. What do you think about the changes? Do you have any feedback for me? Let me know in the comments below. I'm very sorry for the long wait for this devlog. It's been a busy couple of months for me. I took a several week long break to produce the Godot 4 Udemy course, which again, you can check out in the description below. And if you like what you see in these devlogs, please wishlist Gunforged on Steam. The link for that is down below as well. And finally, you can sign up for my newsletter at firebelly.com to stay up to date with my latest work and to be notified when the Gunforged demo is available. Thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to get Gunforged into your hands. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to support my work, you can wishlist Gunforged on Steam. And if you want to learn how to build a 2D survivor style game in Godot 4, you can check out my Udemy course. To stay up to date with my content, you can sign up for my newsletter at firebelly.com. Links for all of that are in the description below.